to dive right into it. Um, please access, assess your team performance in general this season. Because from one point of view, you guys didn't make it to the semis. It's probably not what you guys were looking for. But from another point of view, you guys were one of the most supportive teams out there. And it was such a pleasure watching you. So it can't, the season can't be a fail for you. And you guys had so many amazing swims. Um, Mattel, do you want to start? Yeah, for sure. I think that um, we we are not we were not satisfied about uh, our performances because uh, of course we ended up uh, at the last place every matches, but uh, we were we were and we are aware that uh, we got a great potential in our team because uh, I mean especially in the male field we are uh, a lot much competitive. I mean, we, we ended up at the second place in the male ranking for a couple of times, very close to the first position. And uh, You guys actually won one match on the, on the men's side. Yeah, in terms yeah, of yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, um, but uh, that, that was not, not enough. So, um, I mean, no one to blame. I strongly believe that everyone put his best. But uh, we are aware that uh, we can do much more than, uh, than that. And that's also because uh, we we build up a great team spirit. I mean, uh, we are uh, Centurion is a team based uh, in Rome, but uh, there were more Brazilian guys than uh, Italian ones. So it was a uh, it was uh, a Latin spirit, a team spirit. So I think uh, it's um, we get on well with everyone. Uh, I don't know if uh, Seb agrees with me. He's a he's a rookie, but uh, I think uh, we are uh, a great team for uh, for that reason. Definitely, definitely, we were a great team. I mean, it would be a lie if anybody says that we are not disappointed. I mean, obviously we were last. The we missed a few like key swimmers, but that's probably not a good excuse because this year is like as it is, and every team missed a few swimmers. But I, I'm pretty like optimistic that for the next seasons, we, we can improve. And it would be a really good like story if we could like for the next season make, let's say, I don't know, semis and in a few years also make the final. So we, we have to see where we can improve and we have to arrange, I think, a little bit of swimmers. We had a really good, like, let's say freestyle relays but we missed on the other, like the long distances, and especially in the women field. So yeah, we have to work on that. Yeah, Thank you. Thank it you guys. That overall, it wasn't like the ideal season for you guys and for Diego Centurion. But personally, you, Sebastian, and Matteo, I mean, you were one of the biggest people that were making the jump for the team. You know, Sebastian in that 50 butterfly, in the sprints events, you, Matteo Revolta, doing even backstroke skins races and always scoring points in the 100 butterfly. Personally, how did you feel arriving to the bubble? Were you expecting the bubble to be so fun, so social interaction, we can say? And did you expect yeah. the performance as your output? Uh, yeah, I... I think that uh, the bubble was uh, was a lot of fun. Uh, honestly, I was a bit concerned at the beginning be uh, before going there because um, I didn't know if uh, if the bubble will work or not. But uh, at the end, I mean, I would have stayed there for a couple of weeks more because uh, it was a a perfect a perfect uh, contest to to perform and uh, to live in. And uh, about uh, my performance, um, I, I didn't have uh, um, an idea about, uh, about my shape because I was, uh, I was training just for, uh, for a month after a couple of weeks of, uh, of vacation uh, in August. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So um, I didn't do any, any race pace, uh, for example, at home. So I was uh, pretty curious to, to test myself. And uh, that's why I was uh, pretty happy with uh, with my first match with with my first match because uh, I also enjoy the backstroke as as uh, you said before, and um, I was not used to do that because I swim backstroke backstroke just uh, in the warm up, 
<laughs> nothing more than that but uh, that's uh, that's a race uh, I'm gonna work on because uh, I really enjoy it. Thank you, thank you, Matteo. What about you, Sebastian? Well, I was pretty satisfied satisfied with my races. I try we we swim like four matches, and I try to experiment before every match to see what fits me the best. I was improving from race to race, which I really liked. Uh, I still want to like experiment to see for the next seasons what 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 is like the optimum the the, the optimal the best thing to do before my races. But actually, I was coming to the, to the ISL unprepared. Uh, in, well, I was prepared uh, physically, but I wasn't sure what to expect from my races because, you know, looking back, uh, besides ISL, I had only one uh, competition this year, which was the Nationals. So without racing to come to the biggest stage in the world, it was pretty, like, uh, motivational. And I think that's what, like, the motivation, what I got from the swimming, brought my performance this year, this season. Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah definitely. I mean, what a performance by you, definitely. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe you should get. You should always be racing around these swim races. I mean, <laughs> the, yeah, the I mean, it's, result it's really, progression. Yeah, you have to be like prepared when you're like stepping up on the blocks uh, next to like seven best swimmers in the world. Which mm-hmm. they are, so there's no nothing that you there's nothing less than hundred percent you have to give on each race. Thank you, thank you, Sebastian. Um, guys, let's let's dive into the season a little bit deeper. Um, Mattel, you mentioned that you love racing backstroke, but you only did it really during warmups. Um, were you aware that you're going to be the main backstroker for the Aqua Centurion, especially in relays, um, before you came in? Absolutely not, because uh, uh, I, I was told to swim backstroke uh, just, uh, I mean, a couple of days because, before the first match. And uh, I said, uh, okay, I'm ready. I'm going to do that. And uh, I mean, I, I, I swam fa- uh, 50.7 in my first, uh, my first match. And that uh, was, for, of, sure, of course, my, my personal best. And um, for that reason, I was uh, a bit confident to to get faster through the matches, but uh, I didn't manage mm-hmm. to, to do that. And I was uh, a bit sad, a bit sorry about that. But anyway, um, I know, um, especially in the backstroke, uh, there are many aspects uh, I need to work on in order to, to improve and get faster. For example, uh, the start, the turn, uh, or the technical aspect that... Uh, I never work on, and uh, I can say that uh, in the next uh, in the next season, um, I'm gonna try to to swim uh, under 50 seconds. Why not? Hell yeah, it would be great to see. And um, right now, you would say your biggest advantage in your backstroke is probably your underwaters. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I can uh, I can exploit underwater. So um, honestly, I feel better in the um, backstroke underwater where the, uh, compared to the um, butterfly air one. Ah, very interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's more comfortable. And I don't know why, but that's it. And um, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun to, to swim uh, some different uh, races. So also when, uh, I mean, I'm not a kid anymore, but uh, you can uh, always, uh, find something new to to work on mm-hmm. you know a very interesting point regarding the fact that um backstroke backstroke underwaters feels more powerful than um on your on your chest underwaters remember um ryan lochte used to pull something off where he would turn on a freestyle turn and he would turn on his back and then slowly turn over do you, yeah, yeah, do you think on. that that could be useful for maybe fly a freestyle also Sort of I, kicking I on your know. back for a little while, or on your I side. I don't think so. I think I don't think so because, uh, yeah, it's um, the backstroke underwater uh, make me feel more comfortable. But uh, just when you swim a backstroke race, it's not. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, because luckily, luckily you used to, to do the backstroke underwater and then uh, turn in, uh, in the other position, then uh, get out to mm. swim uh, freestyle or something else. But it, that's not Makes my sense. case. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And definitely it's a great approach that you used uh, this season of ISL to discover new events because maybe that will open your horizons more and see that you're not only can be a good flyer, but a good backstroker and help your team in those aspects as well. But I want to get in touch with something that you mentioned, Mateo. So you mentioned that you only train, prepare be, before the ISL a uh, one month. So only one month yes. of training after some vacation. I mean, you have to be very confident after everything you you succeed after everything you, you did you do sorry uh, during the isl because i mean those times were very consistent and with only one month of training i think that that will give you a lot of confidence leading into next year and next season as well yeah for sure because um competing at isl uh give you a lot of uh, a lot of more confidence because uh, you can um you can race with the uh, with the best swimmer in the world, and that's uh, something you you cannot find. Uh, I mean, I, I, I could not find uh, an environment like that in, in Italy, for example. So, uh, competing in ISL was uh, first of all um, a technical uh, technical aspect I would like to to work on. And then um, I think uh, it's gonna be one of my of, of the main uh, competition in my in my future ISL. Yeah, definitely. Great, and talking great about, to hear as an ISL representative. <laughs> <laughs> and talking about those great competitions, Sebastian. I mean, it seems that the ISL it's like the perfect fit for you because I mean, the 50 butterfly, 50 freestyle in two different days, you can have all the perfect rest in order to perform at your highest level and you mentioned that before coming into ISL you weren't expecting a lot because you didn't know because you already have competed once this year so what did you feel what did you think about when you saw that scoreboard and you see a 22 double and after that match you will start dropping 21-8 21-8 and almost break that world record tell us about that yeah i mean uh of course after the first match i was pretty confident that uh, i will like get better and better because last year as i competed there were like two months where we like traveled and compete for the whole two months and we noticed that for me like the racing is really really good so as much as i race i i, I can improve from race to race. Of course, it's not every time, but we saw also this year that like from, from the first match, I, I tried to improve not only on the speed, but especially on the technical aspect. Also the turns and the underwater are really, I think they are really important in the short course. And that's what I still like. There's still a lot to improve, especially on the 100 both the freestyle, both the butterfly. But I think we are on a pretty good track. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. And also, Sebastian, a question to you. Um, your team ended up swimming the um, Best Rick Skins race twice. Mattel, you ended up participating in both. Um, Sebastian, the Skins race is typically the very last race. It's always the very last race of the match. And judging by your 50 free and your 50 fly, you have to have a solid 50 back just from these underwaters. And also, just judging by your 50 free skins that you did, you can hold speed, especially for a sprinter. 21-1, um, 21-9, 23-0, it's very solid for a 50 free skins. Why didn't we ever see you do 50 back skins? Well, I'm not sure either. Well, I think I was pretty like full uh, with my swims, the both days on every every match, and I think the coaches didn't want me like to because we don't we didn't know what I can do on the backstroke. I think I, I haven't swam like 50 backstroke for a long, long time. So maybe maybe next time we should try if there's no one like 
who wants to swim it or who can do it better. But honestly, I'm not that confident in my 50 backstroke, but you never know. Maybe I just need one race to see how it goes. So I think I, I mean the, the underwaters are also the same, but they're different when you have to do it like on the backstroke. Uh, so I'm I'm not confident yet. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe maybe I should try it like next time or even on some smaller competition before I sell to try to see where I can improve. Because I mean, like 30 meters are on the water, which are let's say pretty good for me. So yeah, you're right. Maybe maybe next time next time I'll try it. We'll see. Never yeah. and never that- say never, Seb. Yeah, of course. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, it would be great to see you race the 50 back. And I, I feel like you, ha- you have to have just a little bit more self-confidence in you. I believe you have a very solid 50 back in you. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. But with that being said, um, a question to both of you. Um, your guys' both skill sets tell me that you guys should be solid 100 IMers. Yet we didn't see a single 100 IM from either of you. And your team seemed like it had a little bit of a hole in the 100 meters individual medley. Um, did you guys, why didn't you guys ever race the 100 IM? And do you potentially see yourself doing that in the future ISL seasons? Yeah, personally, because uh, I, I'm not, uh, my breaststroke is, uh, is terrible. <laughs> I, I, I could swim uh, a great 75 IM without breaststroke, but uh, uh, I mean, maybe, no, honestly, uh, I, I think I could, uh, I could swim about uh, 50, 53, maybe 52 in uh, 100 IM, but uh, I think nothing more than that. So that's not uh, so much competitive. Uh, compared to the hundred back or the hundred fly, so yeah, we, we got we got a wall in that uh, in that races, but also because um, as uh, Sebastian uh, said before, we we had a lot of uh, last minute uh, withdrawal, so we need uh, we had to 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 swim also some um, other distances that uh, were not uh, our own, so. That's it. Okay, fair enough. Thanks, Montel. Sebastian, what about you? Yeah, for me, I mean, as I said, I was pretty full with my races with the freestyle relays and also like the butterfly. As much as you think that I will be solid in the backstroke, I'm pretty sure that you will be like surprised how bad I am in the breaststroke. So I think I will stay with the fly and freestyle and like never even try. Especially okay. in the style. Yeah, I mean... Somebody would say that like it's only 25 breaststroke, but it, it's a lot. It's a lot when you race against, against the best and you have the, those are like hundreds of seconds that like depend on. So I, I don't think it's a good idea to even start like 24 years old to practice breaststroke. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, dangerous for the knees, right? Uh, yeah. And also like my technique. I mean, I, I don't think it's good to, to force something which is not going well. Instead, I should, I should focus on, on things that I'm best good at. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if we see you um, drop some more time in that 50 fly for next season, we might as, as well see you doing full jackpots every second match. So, <laughs> Well, we'll see. Fair we'll enough. see. I mean, one year is a long time, so we'll see who... The younger swimmers are coming up really fast. Yeah. We'll see who, who, what the competition is next time and what I can do and also what others can do. So it doesn't only depend on me for the drag points. Of course. And yeah. sort of um, taking a glimpse into the next season, um, what do you guys think of the new draft system? Each team will have 15 athletes that they'll be able to hold on in their roster and the rest of the athletes go all the way to draft. And the drafting system is going to work the way that um, the team that took the last place last season gets to pick first, and the team that won gets to pick last during the draft. And the draft is going to go many rounds um, before everyone picks all the swimmers. What do you guys think of this draft system? Do you feel like it, it's going to make the teams more fair, would more balanced? Like, would that mean like in one round, one swimmer? 
Um, it's a great question. Um, for now, yes. For the future, it's probably going to go um, five, four, three, two, one, something like that. Okay. Okay. I guess you have the first round. Oh, yeah. That's a, yeah. a pretty big deal. Sounds good. I mean, should I start, Mattel? Yeah, I think that, um, yeah, that's the draft system. Could be a, a great thing to to level up the um, all the team. I mean, uh, to keep a certain balance between uh, between the team. I think they they're looking up uh, what's happening uh, NBA, for example, something like that, uh, in order to 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 help uh, uh, the team who ends up uh, at the last position. I think that's a, that's a good that's a good idea, and uh, but uh, I don't think in um, I think it's the first step to to level up the field because uh, I mean even when uh, even with this uh, draft system, uh, team like Cali Condors or Energy Standard will be always uh, the favorite. So uh, it uh, need to take. Uh, and a couple or three season in order to to see something different, but uh, it's a good first step in that direction. Okay, thank you. Um, do you feel like athletes is good as a good number, or maybe there should be less left on the team? Mm, I don't know that. Maybe no. Maybe 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 it's good because uh, I mean even even with a. Uh, this year we have uh, uh, the 100 IM, uh, and then next season we will have uh, uh, the, the also the 800. So I mean uh, we are uh, we will be able to to cover all the distances uh, without uh, recruiting uh, uh, other athletes. But uh, for me, it will be will be perfect in, uh, in both the the cases. Thank you. Thank you, Mattel. Sebastian, what about you? Well, right. I agree with Mattel. Of course, uh, let's say this system stays for the next, like, like let's say, five seasons. Honestly, like, let's be realistic. Every, every, every swimmer wants to win. And the good swimmers will all, always go to the best teams. And then nobody will stay for the, like, let's say, the lower teams. Then we would have, like, the situation where, like, three teams are really... Even even more difference would be between the first, between like let's say third and the fifth place. So it's a really good idea, I think. And then even for the audience, I think uh, would be really more interesting because they you will know like who's going to win. We have yeah. this season. Realistically, there was like expectation between three teams who would win. And let's say if we continue like the, this new system, the draft system for the next five or I don't know, five years, everybody will be mixed up and then it will be really like hard to predict the winner. Yeah, definitely Absolutely. for the for the audience, it makes the show spectacular, more spectacular as it is right now, I would say. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I think it the is. audience is also really important in this game. Sebastian, you mentioned that you believe the best swimmers will sort of naturally gravitate towards the stronger teams, the teams that have a chance to win. But we ended up chatting to a bunch of teams like the DC Tridents, like the New York Breakers, teams that weren't necessarily in a position to potentially win. But um, speaking to the leaders of their teams, they've voiced a belief that they feel a lot more satisfaction in bringing a team that it's not necessarily the best right now, but through their hard work, perseverance, sort of building the team up and being sort of the OG of the team, if that makes sense. And um, they actually value it more than um, ending up on a team that has more chances to win. Do you have a similar approach or would, would you, would, I mean, it's tough to ask this question when you're sitting no, next to no. a teammate, but maybe you can analyze your own and maybe analyze some of the other swimmers too. Like, do you feel like this is this is a trend or not not as much? It is, of course, it is. I, I believe the same as I told last. Uh, I think it was the first question. I told you that it would be a really good story if we can bring this last aquatrinitarians 
the last place, let's say for the next season into, into semis, with with the same team or not exactly the same, but with 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 a lot of swimmers who are already in the team, bring it into the semifinals and throughout years also to the finals. It re- it would be really like more satisfying than just to join the, the good team. But I was speaking objectively. There is like a lot. Uh, I I think maybe I'm mistaken. Matteo could uh, correct me. May, they are like, if somebody gets a pretty good offer from, from like a stronger team, they will try, I think, they will, they will maybe join if they have the, like, if they got the... Financial benefit? Uh, yeah, no, the economic the offer, yeah, yeah, because everybody wants uh, to swim, like, at least the semifinals, one more match mm. to, to get to the finals. So, Yeah. I would like to, to like it would be a really good story to bring like this team throughout let's say two or three seasons into the finals to compete with the teams that are now like let's say Cali Condors Energy on and also uh, like LA. It would be a really good story. Yeah, you made a good Makes point sense. because it, it has it is related to the culture, to the team environment that you guys are building. And if you are able to do that in three years, like with all the swimmers, you will carry out that momentum. And yeah. at the end, you will be a, a team, actually a team that won the title, not a bunch of swimmers that were all reunited because they were too good, you know? Correct, correct. But and I also, I yeah, go ahead. The Aqua Chinturans were really good. Like the, the atmosphere in the team is really, really good. So I think that's, that's where we should start from. From the atmosphere yeah. and then go on to the to the racing side to see where we can improve for the next season. Oh, and I totally yeah. agree with you because the team environment in the Aqua Centurion, in my opinion, was one of the best, if not the best, looking at the team box and everything you were doing with your teammates. And there is a question for both of you, Mateo and Sebastian. How is the team environment? Because there were a lot of swimmers that were from the past season in this season, so they know each other. But you, Sebastian, you were a new addition. But it seems like everybody welcomed you with the with the hands open, and you had a great time there. So talk us about that. This is yeah, a question for both of you. That's hundred percent correct. I mean, I felt from the first day that I'm welcomed, and that's when you. I mean. I could talk to anybody there, which I'm not sure if in other cl- uh, teams are because I don't know. But but I think I I could talk to every coach uh, we had, and you could you could talk whatever you wanted about to others, you know, and also like to to change opinions and on our free times where as much as we could interact. Uh, in the bubble, it was a really great time with. Yeah, I I, I totally agree with uh, with Sebastian because, uh, as I told before, one of the key point of the team is the uh, is uh, is the team spirit because uh, I mean we get on well with everyone and we can uh, we are helpful with uh, everyone, and uh, I think that's the 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 main the main step to work on in order to to build a strong team uh, that uh, could be more competitive uh, toward the next season and uh, as uh, sebastian said before uh, one of the things that i would like uh, the most is uh, is winning with aqua centurions that's uh, that has to be the plan the, the strategy yeah. Uh, the right. goal, uh, yeah, to get the uh, to get the winning in, uh, I mean, three or four years, and then follow that strategy in order to get better uh, in every in every season. So. Thank you, thank you. Um, could you guys please open up a little bit on how do you actually achieve such a team atmosphere? Do you guys have any team bonding activities, or is it a testament to the coaches where you just like magically the chemistry was there? Yeah, because the, you are a lot of Brazilians and Italians and also a lot of international swimmers like Sebastian from Hungary, Mikhailo from Ukraine. So there's a lot of different cultures and perspectives in the team, but it seems that you guys are all one. Yeah, yeah I think that uh, we are, uh, we are uh, as I told before, um, 
Italian, Brazilian, but also from many many parts of the, of the world. But I think that uh, when uh, when a group is uh, is having fun, uh, there, there's not a, you, you cannot find uh, so much difference between uh, between the culture. So the having fun is the uh, is the key to to perform the best. And uh, I think that uh, also the the rookie like Sebastian could appreciate that uh, that way to to behave, and uh, I think it's a, it's the right uh, direction to keep in order to to win uh, sooner or later. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Same for you, Sebastian. Yeah, I agree with him. I mean, I, I let's say well, honestly, the Italians were like they're based. The, this team is based on Italian, and the, the Italian guys like welcomed us from the first day on. They were they were like joking. And there wasn't like strict behavior from what we had to like follow. Also, the coaches were really nice to us from the first day. And then when you notice the first day, you know the first interaction is always the most important for me, and also for the others. And when you see how the like the team is behaving then you can adjust to them and from then on it was really easy to like have fun but on the other hand when we raced we were pretty serious as much as we could and we left uh, like we had the fun racing but we had we left the fun after the races you guys know you ended up breaking one of the team boxes after your last match <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> that yeah the support you guys were so go crazy in the boot and they had to fix it after but hey that was oh, awesome no, to see no, no, for no. the fans those were the coaches for sure not the swimmer <laughs> okay <laughs> we'll blame it on the coaches of course sebastian a question to you um you know i thought about it whether i should ask this question or not because it could be a little bit sensitive so let me know if that doesn't go well but um go sebastian on. why did you not end up in team iron well, uh, I don't know. I, I, I first I got a few offers from other teams, and last year I'm not sure Iron was like sixth, maybe not sure the placement. I wanted to try something new to see. I was really like optimistic that this year the well yeah this this is the Aquas are gonna like be better, and also I I was looking where I could like. Uh, where I could like tr put my performances, where I could swim like more races, like my races, the freestyle and the butterfly. Mm -hmm. Also, I mean, I'm always like in contact with my coaches where I we, we bring the decision together, and that's why I ended up. First of all, I was waiting like until the last, and if I will even com compete in the ISL because of the whole year, but. And the last we, we, we decided for the Aquachantorians. And I mean, we ended up behind Iron, but I'm not like disappointed because of that. So the I enjoyed really those one and a half months. And I think I won't do any different if I could choose. So now you're an Aqua Centurion for life. Well, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's see what the future brings. But I mean, I like the team. We could be a really good team with a few changes, not okay. like streamer-wise, but like also mental-wise to, to to see where we can put each swimmer in the in uh, better strokes. We had a lot fast guys on the free side, but we had a, a lot of holes in the other distances and strokes. So yeah, we have to improve on that. Makes yeah. sense. Thanks. Yeah, you guys actually ended up winning every single 4 by 100 freestyle relay for man that you participated in. So. No, the, the <laughs> last one, the last one we got second behind Kali Converse, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're totally right. Oh. Yeah, but the yeah. relays, Almost. I'm really, really, I mean, it was really, the especially the man side, the relays were really good. Even with Matteo as a backstroker, he did a really great job, but we were all, always competing with others. We were always second, third, or fourth in the relay. We never ended first. We never had to uh, could choose the skin race, unfortunately. But I mean, we're competitive in that race also. And, and talking about that, you made a good point there. 
you never got the opportunity to choose that skins races, but let's say that if you were able to pick it, both of you, I mean, will you go obviously with butterfly? I mean, you and Matteo are very, very strong. Will you agree with me or will you try to do, I don't know, backstroke, freestyle, because the other fields are also pretty strong. Yeah, Scosoli and Martin Yeri for Bresto could be could be an option. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, Nicolo. Arca turns have every stroke covered except backstroke. So it depends from the from the uh, from the competition, the other teams uh, from the match. But I think we had covered pretty good the fly, the back, the breaststroke, especially the best, uh, the men's breaststroke, and also with uh, Mirassi we had a pretty good freestyle. So it depends from, from the competition, but I, I'm i pretty sad that we couldn't choose at least once the skins for the men's, but this is what it is, as I will say for the next yeah. season. Yeah. I, I, think, I think we, we would have chosen uh, maybe Butterfly because, uh, I mean, we had Sebastian who uh, was, uh, I mean, the fastest in the field. And uh, I mean, my, I could have uh, given my also my support because the, the biggest obstacle for me was uh, to to skip the first round because I'm not a pure sprinter so uh, I'm um, I'm more I was a bit confident to keep uh, two or three by fifty on the same level so it could be a a good stroke and also yeah the brass stroke we were um, very tough but also. I mean the other uh, other team uh, were uh, were very tough as well. I mean uh, Henry Standard and uh, Team Iron and uh, London Roar. So it will d depend on uh, the other team we were uh, facing. But uh, that's it. Correct. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Matteo. Now you can see. Sorry. Now you can see the the one one swimmer how much uh, difference can make if we had like one pretty good backstroker. Then we would probably win few, some of the relays, and we could choose the skins where we could like get more points than let's say I think Mattel swam like three times backstroke skins, or maybe at least two. Yeah, three there, times. Yeah, two times. Yeah, yeah, where we couldn't like take any points, not a lot of points. Yeah. We did take, uh, yeah. but not a lot of points. Uh, I did my best, but uh, especially in the 50. In the 50 back, I uh, was not uh, competitive enough, but uh, Sebastian uh, is right. Yeah. You were fifth and sixth, though. You were, you were almost there. Yeah, yeah, back yeah. Skins. He, he's not to blame. He's, he, he did a really great job. Yeah. But also, he had to cover the... Uh, uh, be, be, uh, before that, the, the, the relays and also like the butterflies. So he got also tired and there's nothing talk about anymore yeah yeah definitely Fair enough. but switching um, a little bit the team here uh, Matteo uh, and Sebastian well I mean Aqua Centurion uh, as you mentioned Sebastian is uh, an Italian team you know and, and Matteo uh, being a 2012 and 2016 Olympian and being a very experienced swimmer you have seen during your whole career that in Italy, I mean, swimming is a very big deal. It's a very big sport and people really enjoy it. Maybe last season in Napoli, you saw how, the, or, or in the Sete Colli Trophy there in Rome, you see how the people react to the swimming competition. So how have you, both of you feel that this ISL, this team, Aqua Centurions, have made the impact on the Italian community, but also in other countries as well? What will you say about that hey i think that uh, yeah that's um we got an, an italian spirit inside and outside i mean uh, we can uh, we can share this uh, this uh, this spirit also to our supporters because uh, yeah we are uh, in italy we are used to we are used to to be some noisy and, and celebrate so uh, I think that's uh, that's a key point to to, to exploit, and uh, I think um, Italy will be a a great a great uh, potential market for uh, for ISL and for uh, for Aquacenturians for 
for for that reason because um yeah we, we love uh, we love swimming but uh, it's not uh, we, we don't exploit it enough so there's a lot of uh, a lot of potential oh, definitely and, so, and in hungary how is are the things because we were there in the bubble i mean we didn't have a lot of interaction in budapest only in the Duna Arena and in the hotels. But I know that swimming is a very big sport, maybe the national sport for you guys. So Sebastian, what would you say that this ISL is making for the fans, for the swimming community? Oh, the Hungarians really love swimming. That's for sure. I mean, if you have seen the 2017 roles and also like la last year's, last year we had like the, the Uh, also one competition in the ISL in Budapest. This year was different. We didn't have like spectators where, I mean, I think for, for the next few, like year, for the for the future of the sport, the spectators the, are a must. And when, when, when swimmers get out on the blocks on, in, in Duna Arena in Budapest, then you can hear also and see that the Hungarians really love this sport and they are like really fans really love them so i hope like also for the rome and like for the budapest for the next for the future i hope we can like free, uh full the the pools to see how much everyone loves swimming uh, it would be a really awesome thing besides budapest to also like makes i that's just like an idea to make one isl competition room i think that would be amazing I think it's definitely coming the way of Rome at some point. Yeah, um, but with that being said, um, Mattel, I have a question to you. Um, we already mentioned a bunch of times Aqua Centurions being an Italian-based team. But what we didn't mention is the impact the Federation had on the Aqua Centurions, specifically the Italian Swimming Federation. Um, from the perspective of the Federation, it makes sense It makes sense why they were a little bit on the fence with ISL because it's the COVID period, the Olympic Games are approaching, and they're a little bit concerned about the athletes potentially getting sick. But could you open up on, like, did you guys have a lot of pressure coming from the Italian Federation not to participate in the ISL, or were they kind of, fine, go ahead? Yeah, that's a, that's a big deal because... Uh the relationship between uh, Italian Federation and ISL it's not qu quite good that's uh, the reason why um, many Italian swimmers didn't come to, to Budapest because uh, we were uh, about forced to to withdraw and that's uh, that's a bad thing because uh, for uh, I mean I cannot talk about the, the real uh, reason behind that. Um, I mean, that way to to behave of uh, of the federation. But uh, I just can say that uh, the the federation doesn't like ISL, and uh, we were we are deeply sorry about that. But uh, um, I think ISL uh, is going to be. The future of the sport because uh, it's something uh, it's, it's, it's something new. Uh, it's something that uh, you cannot you cannot stop anymore, and uh, it's something that uh, is uh, is meant to to expand and uh, become uh, always bigger. So, uh, ISL was a, was a blessing for um, for that reason. Thank you. Thank you, Mattel. And um, you mentioned that a bunch of Italian swimmers made the decision not to come. How yeah. come you came? Because, uh, because I strongly believe that uh, ISL uh, will be a great part of my, of my future career. So I was, uh, I was willing to, to do it, uh, to do it uh, anyway. So uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it, was, uh, it was up to you. Uh, many many swimmers uh, gave up, but uh, not not um, the other not. I mean, we were about uh, five uh, five guys from uh, from Italy, five or six, and uh, but we would have been uh, many more. 
so it's uh, it was a personal decision, and uh, I was happy. I was happy to to be there. You know, Mantel, um, I think um, decisions like you've made and brave people like you change change a lot of things in the world. And um, huge huge credit goes to you to deciding to actually come and um, test out the waters in this um, uncertain period. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Also, because I think that uh, the ISL bubble was uh, the safe, probably the safest place to live and to train. So. Uh, I, I strongly believe that uh, I did the right uh, the right decision. Thank you, thank you, Mattel. Sebastian, a question to you. Um, let's um, let's take a trip down memory lane. Um, do you, by any chance, remember taking part in the Energy Standard Swim Meet um, back in Moscow years ago? No. Oh, you don't. I was, no, I was never in Moscow. Sorry, not even. I haven't visited the town. Oh, sorry. Sure? I, I was convinced. I, I was convinced you participated. So you've no, never participated sure in the Energy Standard Swim Meet? No, no, for sure not. Oh, what wow. was it? What a what letdown. Well, it was actually hosted um, twice a year, every year, starting from 2013, ending 2017. And we always had the um, Hungarian team present. The ages were 96 to 98. No, no, for sure. I oh, wasn't strange. There. Strange. Yeah. Okay. But um, with this being said, guys, um, let's talk a little bit about the longevity of swimmers um, in the ISL and in the swimming world in general. Um, Sebastian, your main counterpart in the 50 fly was almost double your age, Nicolas yeah. Santos. Yeah. Um, do you guys feel like the ISL is now creating a trend where the um, athletes um, – professional lives are going to be extended because they have an opportunity to gain money to race every year and maybe even race only the 50s not going into the hundreds do you guys feel like this will prolong the career of swimmers or from another point of view you guys actually have to race a lot in the span of two days in the span of the match and this is definitely a hit on the recovery so maybe maybe not could you guys open up on that a little bit well yeah i really hope it it's getting there i really hope it's becoming a trend that older swimmers can also like make a living from it which should be like a goal aim for that uh we'll see how it goes but i really uh, what you talk about the the recovery after two days i think the the format in the, the in the isl is really good so i think the swimmers and the coaches and also the team has to be smart and clever to sometimes rest the older swimmers or the some some uh, even younger swimmers for competing more so they could like uh, perform at their best for the next match. And there are a lot of uh, strategies that you can like implement in this format. So I think the recovery should, I mean, I'm not like, even also, maybe I'm not the best one to talk about it, but I think the recovery shouldn't be like that much of a deal and a, a deal breaker for it. As much as like the other swimmers are co uh, covering you sometimes, it could be a really good like job for your, like let's say the oldest swimmer is like, I think Santos like 39 years old and he's like really a beast. And he's now the oldest, but we'll see in, in 10 or like 15 years, maybe they're going to be like even older swimmers performing even better. So I think the smarter the, the swimming community works, the better it can, it can go. Thank you, Sebastian. Much of the same for you, Mateus. Mateus, sorry. Yeah, yeah, uh, I agree with Seb. I think that... Uh... Uh, an athlete like uh, an athlete like uh, Nicolas Santos could be something that can uh, pull all the other um, swimmers to to keep going on. I mean, I'm uh, I'm 29 years old and uh, I'm feeling uh, <laughs> a bit a bit old compared to to the new generation. But when you if you if you compare to athletes like uh, Nicolas Santos, Nicolas Santos, you say, okay, it's uh, 
it's going to be possible to to keep swimming at a high level for uh, for other uh, for many years again so it's a uh, it's it's a great example of uh, dedication and uh, i mean it's a professional swimmer and a very helpful guy and uh, that's a, that's a, a great thing for uh, for the world movement and uh, great uh, advertising for the ISL as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Definitely. In, in both, sorry, both of you mentioned the recovery aspect, the training, that it's going to make swimmers to keep training and competing at the highest level. But I want to make you, both of you guys, a question. Well, it's not a question. Maybe it's like, yeah, some facts. Because, I mean, you are one of the biggest swimmers in the world right now. You proved that in the ISL season, but I want to know what is the hardest training set that you've ever done in your career, or what's your pre race routine? Something that you can tell us to the fans, to the audience, in order to get to know you better. Come on, the the, the fans want to know your hardest set. They don't want to know your pre 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 um, pre match routine. They want to know the hardest <laughs> sets. Come on, guys. Mateo could go first if he knows. No, I no, no. A little bit. I... I'm I'm gonna follow you, please. <laughs> okay. Well, actually, I'm not sure. There were a lot of like hard sets. I saw it was really like simple but hard. I did once like ten times uh, hundred, ten times hundred. One was like freestyle pace, and then the second was second one was fly like all out, and the first like five six or decent and then i was like the re the last four like were dying wasn't you what was the recovery excuse me how much did you have between the hundred well, 145 was everything <sighs> yeah oh, that mean, that's cruel <laughs> yeah 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 I, i i mean i don't want to talk how it ended but it was pretty that's the one i remember where i was like really really angry Hey, that's definitely going to help out your 50 fly, isn't it? Uh, well, not, but I, I have to work on, on the on the hard fly for sure. Well, of course, of course. Yeah, Mantel, do you want to do you want to voice the yeah biggest yeah, pain? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can say that for a sprinter, uh, practicing like that is uh, are, are the toughest. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I used to to swim, for example. Uh, eight uh, times or ten times uh, 100 hundred uh, split in uh, two by fifty or one uh, hundred um, mm, the wall hundred when you um, especially when you you don't have to to focus on uh, on the time but uh, on the effort so you start uh, to swim all out and then uh, try to survive and, <laughs> and uh, get through the end and uh, it's really it's really painful yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not you, always like, excuse me, it's not always like uh, about the set. Sometimes your body doesn't feel good, and then like 350s feel way worse than like 10 times 200 yeah. or something. So, yeah, it depends from your body, from your mindset on that day. So, that's a lot of like different aspects where you should like. Yeah, of course, a lot of things go into it. You might have a bad day and an easy set might turn into hell. Yeah, makes sense. Course, yeah. Sebastian, um, before the start of this podcast, we had a chance to chat just a little bit and you mentioned that right now you're on vacation. You're not swimming. Correct. Um, a lot of the swimmers in the world right now, especially young swimmers, are feeling incredibly concerned about the fact that they can't train for long periods of time, that they can't train specifically over Christmas and New Year's, a lot of pools closed. Can you maybe provide a couple of words of encouragement for these, for these, for these young swimmers that are stressing out about not having pool space? And Yeah. A few minutes ago, we talked about longevity and like swimmers, 40 years old swing. So for the young, young swimmers, they shouldn't be like any concerned about this because I mean, they're still young. There's, they will catch up. And I think this, this year, the safety and the health is in, is more important than any sport and everything. So, but nonetheless, they, they should like focus on some other things and 
this this will also like be gone in uh, no time so just they will catch up nothing to worry about i think i'm, I'm pretty sure there's nothing to worry about the, Thank the you. pools Thank will you, open Sebastian. and they will start doing especially when you're young you can you can really easy catch up on your on the other right. side and especially there's a trend of swimming going on, especially for young swimmers, of coaches overworking young swimmers. Correct. Maybe for some of these athletes, this race rest will become beneficial. Correct. Correct. That's what I was talking with some some friend of mine that maybe a lot of swimmers were their whole lives training, and uh, maybe this year the lockdowns and the stuff maybe that, that will help for them not only to recover their body, but only to reco- also to recover their mind and to get even more motivated. And you know, sometimes the body doesn't even tell you, but it needs some rest. Okay, thank you. Ah, I think well, guys, rest is key for performance, you know? You said it, both of you said it, and, and I totally agree with, with you in that aspect, yeah. Right. Well, guys, um, we know you're busy athletes, um, Sebastian, we don't want to take you away from your vacation for too long, away from your family. Very um, kind. Mattel, you're probably busy as well. So we, we're going to be wrapping this up. But before we end this, do you guys want to um, just say a couple of words to your hardcore fans, to the Aqua Centurions fans? Yeah, I, I can say that uh, the next season will probably take place in, uh, in Italy, in Naples. So, yeah. I can't wait to, ho- hopefully, uh, our supporter could, uh, could come and uh, cheer for us. And I uh, can't wait to, to compete again with, uh, with the, that amazing crowd that uh, we found uh, last year. And, uh, it's going to be a, a, a big boost for us in order to, to, give, uh, to give our best. Thank you, Mattel. Sebastian? Yeah, I'm fr- first time hearing that uh, the next season is in Naples. Well, that sounds good. I'm not uh, the guy on social media, so I don't follow a lot of things, but it sounds really good. I hope that the, like, the fans are going to be able to come. We'll see how it goes, but thanks everybody for cheering us up. And well, I, I mean, we have to, there's no, we have to like be better for the next season and like to improve. There's no yeah. other way around. And you guys are going to be shining in front of a home crowd. Extra yeah, yeah. responsibility. That, of course, yeah. and extra motivation. I mean, ice cream, pizza, and swimming in Napoli. What else do you want, no? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nothing better. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Guys, but with this being said, um, thank you so much for joining us. It was a blast and it was a pleasure. We hope to see you in future podcasts. And to all the fans watching, we will have a match analysis taking place tomorrow of match five. Stay with us. And after this, we will have a bit of a break in our podcast and we will come back after the New Year's. Thank you for hopping on and hope you enjoyed.